Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice, and we have my favorite type of episode today. We have a success story, a story of an entrepreneur's journey, because there's too many people out there, uh, hopefully I don't fall into this category, but just telling you, go do it, go chase your dreams, you're going to be a millionaire. It's all BS, okay? We want to hear how real people, boots on the ground, made their mark on this world, chased their dreams, and how they grew their business. So I have Chelsea Albert with me. She is an intuitive hypnotherapist. And we're going to unpack her story and see what's going on, how you grow your business on a shoestring budget. So before we dive in, Chelsea, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hey, Brandon. I'm so stoked to be here. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. The computer gnomes are attacking both of us already in, you know, in this episode. So we're going to just we're gonna see how this goes, right? We're, yeah. I always love technology. Um, Mercury's in Gatorade or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm excited to dive in, though. Um, intuitive hypnotherapy. That sounds complex. It sounds like you need seven degrees. Um, I'm curious, though, what what got you into this uh, line of work in the first place? Yeah, so I had started out in the salon industry, and you know, you're always everyone's therapist in that industry anyway, right? But uh, I wanted to work with people on a deeper level. So flash forward, I went through my own uh, kind of journey, and I went through a divorce, and I was looking for my own healing and I went to every every therapist in the books, the psychologist, the psychiatrist, the nail nail lady, everyone that I could try to go to. And it wasn't until I found hypnotherapy that something actually really clicked and stuck and I was able to get past all those old patterns that I was going through. So naturally thought, oh my God, I have to learn this. And then once I learned it, I was like, how do I get clients? How do I how do I actually like click this over? Cause I, you know, there's, it was a unique industry and it still is. And it's um, hopefully I can share something with maybe some of your more non-traditional um, audience today that are working on something that may not be as easy as, Hey, something that you can put on a business card. Yeah. I, well, I think everything's a non-traditional business. At least it should be viewed that way because there's, there's so many lies on the internet about, you know, run this Facebook ad and triple your business overnight or do a five day challenge and get clients effortlessly. Like I can't stand these lies on the internet about how to grow your business, how to get clients. So that's the magic question is what you said. How do I get clients for this unique business? That's what everybody's always asking, especially when they're in startup mode, but even further, like we ask ourselves that we ask our clients that how do we get clients and how do we do it for as little of a cost as possible? And I think that's a valuable question to not fall in this trap of, again, all the gurus on the internet. So before we move forward, I have to know who was the best therapist for you? Was it the nail lady or was it the actual certified therapist? Because I have a hunch, but I want to hear from you. Oh, God, I got to tell you, between the nail lady and my hairstylist, usually they can you know, click something over. But I do have a couple of healing mentors. Uh, the guy who, like I said, actually eventually became my teacher. He was definitely like the catalyst to everything, I think. And since then, you know, I've had people who have been with me on my journey since beforehand, like my energy healing mentor. She's been there with me kind of through like my actual awakening and like, oh, shit, I actually do want to be a healer. Um, so, yeah, I've had a lot of mentors along the way. But I think honestly, for me, traditional therapy always tended to plateau. So I was looking for something that would break through that plateau because I was always super analytical and I was really good at talking myself into circles and trying to help the therapist like, yeah, no, it has to be my parents clearly. And I would go off on a spin. Um, so I had to get out of my own way and, you know, the unconscious work and the energy work that I've been doing and that I've incorporated into my own practice have really would have been got what got me out of my head. Yeah. I, I, I would say, you know, this is a business show. So from a yeah. business perspective, I think therapists have one of the best business models because they retain their clients for a long time. And I think you can read between the lines of how I feel about traditional therapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you actually, you speak to something that's kind of really a struggle with my industry. My goal as a healer is to help you not need me as efficiently as possible, which is a terrible business model. Yeah. <laughs> 
It really <laughs> is. This is this is dumb. Why are you doing this? <laughs> right. But I, you know, I want your referrals more than I want your money. So I would rather help somebody heal and not need me, except maybe, you know, occasionally when something comes up. And I would rather them tell 20 friends about me. You know, it, like that's that's just kind of how I've always operated. But you're right. It is a terrible business model to help people heal. <laughs> no, I think it's the best. We we are fractional COOs. We're consultants. Same model. It, we need to get you off of our client list as soon as possible because that means your your company is actually growing. It's successful. You can afford a, a full time COO costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars. I believe in that business model because the client is winning. And when they win, they give you referrals um, to their yeah. best friends and, and other businesses that they know. So I love this business model and I want to unpack it for you and your story. So you fell in love with hypnotherapy. You knew you had to do this. You had to be a healer. You you went and got trained and, and then you asked that question, right? How do I get clients? So I want to hear like, what was, what was your journey to get the first client? I think that's always a fun story. Mm -hmm. So my first client was kind of captive. Um, I So I was working in the salon. I was doing uh, eyelash extensions. So I have one of my favorites there on the table. And she's talking about, you know, how she had been wanting to date. And she had, you know, ever since her divorce, she's been sketched out about it. But she really wants to meet someone. But she really, you know, that, that whole thing. And I'd been hearing her come in with this for a good little while. And then finally, uh, this is, you know, shortly after I finished my extended mentorship, I said, you know what? let me try something. And sometimes I think like getting that first client has to almost be like a, Hey, can I just try this? Sometimes your, fir your first client's not always paid. Sometimes they turn into your first paying client, but I think that's the hardest one to do. And I think sometimes you just have to dive in with somebody who's already within your circle, who's already open to it. So like, you know, if you know, if you're an artist and you know that somebody near you, you know, they're always, you know, showing things on Instagram of cool, unique art. Hey, let me show you this. What do you think? Hey, you know, what about this? Or if you've written something, hey, would you mind reading this? Just something to get that first little click in. And from there, it starts rolling a little bit easier. Yeah, that's that's fair. So then how did that one turn out? Was it like that one time session on the table or did she turn into a paying client? So she actually did pay me for a few more sessions because she came back three weeks later and said, okay, well, I've gotten online and I, I met someone I actually like. So we did another session on another relationship that she had and healed that. And the next three weeks she comes in, she goes, yeah, we've been on a couple dates. I think I really like him. And uh, just uh, an update, they got married this year. So it was, I was hooked, she was hooked and it was like, okay, yes, this is something that has legs. This is something I can do. That's amazing. How long ago was that first session? Oh gosh, uh, three years, I think. Three, four wow. years, something like that. Uh, let's see. I started in 2020. I started my education. And then uh, 2021, I kind of, I dove in and I was like, okay, I am Chelsea. I'm a hypnotherapist and let's do this and see what happens. Yeah. That's amazing though. I mean, three years, lasting results. I, did you get rid of her as a client? I mean, it, like, it sounds like pretty quickly she kind of overcame what was stopping her and now she's, she's married. That's amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. And just, you know, every she's still she's still in my heart. But, you know, we caught up a little while back, um, kind of beginning of last year. And it was just so cool. It, just so cool to get that update because sometimes I don't get updates. That's another challenge of being in business for yourself is sometimes your clients that are actually really happy may never talk to you again. And it's getting over that ego and getting over that self-esteem of I need glowing feedback from everybody. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, that's awesome. And then I can see, obviously, you're you're hooked, right? Like it's you had success. You loved it beforehand. You had success, relatively quick success. It sounds like. How did you go from one client who you just randomly tried something on to then actually building a business around hypnotherapy? It's it's not as easy to say like every client just laid on the table in front of you wanting eyelash extensions. I assume. <laughs> right. And then I can just convert them. Uh, yeah, 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 right? that, that was, it was my idea at first, but that obviously didn't work. Um, <laughs> because you know, there, there's a, there's a boundary there. People are just coming to see you for beauty services. They're not always coming. So, you know, I had to understand those boundaries, but more, more interestingly enough, like my journey in particular, I, for some reason, the social media marketing, all the gurus that you were talking about, it didn't work for me. I didn't like it. It didn't feel authentic. It didn't feel like, and you know, people I think were responding to the fact that I didn't feel it was authentic. So um, if you've ever read The Art of War, and I haven't read it in years, but there's a, a line from Sun Tzu that says, be where you are not expected. 
I think that's huge for anybody in any industry, but um, I started getting inviting getting invited to networking groups and just little local Nashville free networking groups where you just go, you go around the table, have a minute speech, let everyone know who you are and what you do. And that surprisingly was what built my business. And I was so scared to go into those meetings because I thought, well, who am I? You know, I'm, I'm this kooky, you know, skater punk kind of kid who's telling people that she's going to tinker in their head. They are not going like these insurance agents are not going to want to hear from me. But <laughs> turns out you never know who's going to want your service. You may think that you're in a total room that you don't belong in. And there's someone who just goes, huh, I've actually been looking for that. Tell me more. So kind of going out of my own industry's box was actually what helped me um, get clients and also um, Facebook groups. I was remarkably successful with local women's groups because a lot of, um, and this was just for mental health industry, but a lot of women's groups are very supportive of mental health. So a lot of them feel vulnerable posting, hey, does anyone know a therapist? Does anyone who can know anyone who can help me with my anxiety? And I started, posting on there and responding and started getting more and more feedback and more and more interest. And then after that, people started shouting me out and it was, it kind of snowballed from there, but definitely working with a local audience and going into areas and arenas that your industry typically doesn't go into would be my best advice for building a business. Yeah. I like that. I mean, technically you, you are on social media doing that, but not in the traditional sense, like, like you yeah. talked like that, that whole here, do this for like post five times a week for this amount of clients. I, you know, those gurus that really sell like a package program. I was just like, I was just kind of throwing spaghetti at a wall and that was the wall that stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not always our best advice to throw spaghetti at the wall, but no. for you, <laughs> I don't... you do have to test. And I don't, I really don't believe in, in just blindly following advice of gurus because they say something worked. Does it work for them or does it work universally? Or, or are they going to hold your hand and figure out how it works for you and your situation? That's the difference in that line. Like if someone's going to sit with you on one-on-one -on -one and say like, no, this is how you leverage Instagram to grow your business. I'll sit with you for the next eight weeks to do it. Fine. If it's go post on Instagram five times a week and it'll grow your business. How? Somebody please explain that to me. I can't yeah. stand that advice. Exactly. I think, you know, especially when you are kind of on a very low budget, because I wasn't, you know, I didn't have a lot of money to invest into like, you know, a bunch of ads or a bunch of, you know, I didn't even know who I was at the time. So I couldn't really advertise that. Um, and I think you're right. I think there's, you don't want to be throwing spaghetti at a wall for too long. Once you figure out what works, hammer it. Um, but I think in that beginning phase, you kind of, at least for myself and, you know, maybe you had a different experience that I'd love to hear about. Um, I would not, I would try to kind of overthink it and be like, okay, this is a strategy I'm going to use. This is this, this is this. But the things I've had the most success with have started with, okay, I'm just going to tinker. I'm going to be open. I'm going to see what new avenue. This doesn't seem to make sense, but I'm just going to try it. If it doesn't work, I'll leave it. But if it does work, keep running with it. Yeah, I think everything you're saying is is hitting on the fact that business is built on relationships. And yeah. in person networking, I'm glad you called out the uh, average attendee in the room who we won't uh, we won't restate that, but <laughs> it tends to be true. Um, there's always one of them. And then also uh, Facebook groups, which are basically just virtual networking groups, especially if it's local, like you're looking for local services or, or to meet other people locally. Those are building relationships it, it, with yeah. people who have things in common. So um, that's why I just I, I don't like going for paid ads or, or just generic stuff on social media because the lift to, to get a client is so big versus just building a relationship somehow. So tell me about how you leverage those two avenues, but just building relationships in general to actually continue to grow your business over the years. Yeah, that so that kind of spiraled at first, you know, I was just getting clients from it. And then I began, then I began getting referrals from it. And that, you know, you get one client, and then they refer a couple of friends. So now you've got two clients and it, it, it kind of tends to multiply from there. So building relationships and honestly, as, as an entrepreneur, as somebody who is a self-professed workaholic, cause I love what I do. It's kind of where you make your friendships too. You get into a 
group of people that push you and challenge you. And it's, you know, it's a really cool thing. But also going back to the shoestring budget for just a sec, when you are able to make those connections and make those friendships and those relationships, you also get access to those people's resources, just like they get access to yours. And so if it means that I'm having a cup of coffee with someone on a bad day, then you know, they get kind of, they get access to my work without necessarily, you know, having to be like the whole, you know, if they're, if we're just talking business and they're like, you know, I'm really having trouble with it, they might actually get a really good benefit from having coffee with me. Um, and in the same token, I've also been able to get access to some really amazing professional work on, I will say, a little bit of a budget. I've been able to barter services. I've been able to, and I don't always recommend bartering because then you can kind of get into a slippery slope of, great, you've got all these resources, but you don't actually have any money. Um, you need to have a balance there. But when you're in the right scenario and in the right setup, you can really get access to some amazing resources that otherwise you wouldn't have been able to have access to if you were just trying to do it all from your laptop within your house and not go outside. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking about building a business on a shoestring budget, but it it's still coming back to relationships, which I'm glad this is where the conversation went because yeah. the general consensus of today is go market to a cold audience on the internet who you don't know. And business has never been that way and i don't i don't believe it ever will be that way even in the world of ai that we live in i find time and time again it's the personal touches it's the human touches that go above and beyond everything else we do no matter how much you automate a handwritten thank you card will still go 10 times further than an automated email and i just i stand by that absolutely i gotta tell you as someone who is terrible at those notes it's <laughs> It is gold though, but as a client, like I've had people that I've never even worked with that I've just had coffee with and they've sent me a note and every time it just warms my heart. And it, it really is, I think you're right. It comes down to relationships because also those people who have those relationships with you, they're going to be your support net. They are going to be the people that you can go to either A, when you have no idea and you're just stuck and you need to learn something new or again, like just emotionally, you know, there's, it is kind of a cool club that we're all in that if you tell somebody you're in business for yourself and they're in business, you have a friend, you know, and it's, there's a couple of people who take that too far and they're like, oh, hey, let me give you my card. No, 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 no. But if you get really good with those relationships, you've got a support system that you have no idea how powerful it is. Absolutely. Well, I want to give the world your business card, uh, so to speak. I put your website on the screen here, wherever you're watching or listening. It's also in the show notes down below. You can go check out Chelsea and schedule a consultation. See, maybe maybe she can help you grow your business uh, with hypnotherapy. And I, I'm a believer in the product or the service, if you will. I think it's, it's a, a phenomenal option that's way better than traditional therapy. So uh, if you, if it's, if it's right for you, I would say definitely go check it out. Go check out Chelsea. She's uh, I can I can tell I can feel you through the screen here. We've built a relationship. Imagine that it's the secret of podcasting. Um, I, I love this medium because I get to meet amazing people like you. You get to share your story and I get to hear about it selfishly. This is podcasting is the biggest cheat code in the world because I just get to talk to amazing people like you. So thank you for coming on this show, Chelsea. It's amazing to have you here. Thank you, Brandon. It was just so cool to see you, to, just to see you geek out just there about podcasting. I love working with passionate people. And this was just so fun for me. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Absolutely. I have one last question that I just think is is important because we all need to be kind of looking at where we're going, right? I mean, our story is fantastic of what got us here. It's always inspirational to be able to hear you grew your business on a shoestring budget. But where where do you want to take your business and and at least what's your plan to get there in the next like three to five years? Where are you going? Yeah. So I actually, I just launched a membership format where other people can have access to not only recorded audios of my best work um, and my best protocols, but also live one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I really, I love doing my private sessions. Um, I want to reach more people. I really like this, this world is in it, it, we're in interesting times <laughs> um, and there's a I'm lot of anxiety, it. a lot of pain out there. And this is no time for me to be playing small. So right now I am inviting more and more people into that membership to join that community um, and to get healing on the go whenever they need it. And um, 
So that's really, that's my big passion project right now. Uh, I wouldn't say it started out as like a, you know, three to five year goal, but it just came up and we started working on it. And then it's growing into this thing that's kind of taken on a life of its own. So I think I'm really going to nurture that and uh, just enjoy expanding my reach. And in doing that, the money in the business will grow. Preach. Impact first. Everything else follows. I love it. That's fantastic advice. So Chelsea, thank you again for coming. For you watching, listening, wherever you are, first go to her website. Go check it out. You're going to want to see that. Second, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a minute of this daily ridiculous show where we hopefully just disrupt the way you think a little tiny bit about growing your business and help you get to that next level one crazy episode at a time. Thank you for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.